If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Maki, uh, Dennis was telling us he didn't get to really be a part of much of the game on Sunday night, unfortunately. For you, being out there, being back in the Ravens-Steelers rivalry, you know, you've got plenty of history with it. But being back and being a part of it again, was it everything you remembered it being? Was it maybe even more than you remembered it being on Sunday night? Oh, yeah, it's everything. It's, when I first got here, 2 I think... Uh, we went and played them, and their fullback was, we played a college ball together um, for Matuma Fala. Yeah. Had. So we're on the Probably field. You're the only man that can pronounce his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're playing each other, and this is my first time experience with the rivalry. We tackle him, and his helmet falls off. He's my, you know, we played a college ball together. I walk over and grab his helmet and pick it up for him. Right, he was Utah guy. That's right. Chris McAllister at that time was here. He runs over me, pulls it out of my head, throws it on the ground and says, we do not pick up steel helmets. We knock them off. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I, I get I'm in. I'm with you. Yeah, I guess I get it. Now. I guess I'll be friends with him after the game. Yes, right. In the meantime, let's knock his helmets off. Right. That's a pretty good story, by the way. That's a good one. Uh, what was Monday like for you? Did you spend like the whole day in the cold tub? Monday was a rehab, man. <laughs> it took me about three days. I didn't start feeling good till this afternoon. Really? It's that type of game, you know. When the Steelers and the Ravens get together, there's going to be some knockouts. There's going to be a lot of concussion, you know. Mostly on their side. It <laughs> <laughs> figures that's the game that got a concussion. That's the type of game, you know. Yeah. It, of all the games, that would be the game when you got a concussion. Absolutely. It's the Steelers game. You know, I come on the sideline and I'm, I'm spitting. I'm like, man, something tastes right. I'm spitting out blood. Right. Like, oh, man, it's a Steeler game. Yeah. At that point, you're sort of like, I love it. I love it. I want more of this. I want the taste of blood. But it all, all ended up good at the end as one. You didn't think about approaching Dennis on Sunday night and saying something like, uh, dude, by the way, you're going to give me a car, right? Like you, you, you didn't think about doing anything like that, did you? I should, though. I should ask him for a car. Yeah, right? You didn't have anybody that, that told you stories like that on Tuesday. Like, dude, you don't remember? I came up to you and you were like, I'm going to take you out to dinner on Friday night. Yeah, everyone seems to be joking with me about stuff like that. I, I literally think every person that I've talked to since the game comes up to me and they put, you know, two fingers up and they say, how many fingers am I holding up? Right. I mean, everybody thinks I'm delirious still, so. And for the fun of it, you always say four. Yeah, right? exactly. It's just like, I know exactly how many fingers you have. Absolutely. Maka Kimoratu, Dennis Pitta joining us here for Thursday Night Live on WNST. Maka, um, you coming back to Baltimore this year. You, uh, you being a part of the Ravens once again, you, we uh -huh. talked before the season about what it meant to you. What, what is it really, being back here and Ravens defense and being around the guys like Ray that you got to know before, what's it been like to be back and be a part of this again? It's, it's been great as far as coming back. It's like, a, this is like my 10th year in the league um, and I've been on two other teams. And I'm not just saying it just because I'm with Ravens. When I came here, this organization with the Ravens is is, is so much family oriented. It's, it's unbelievable what they do. So you know, when I left here, well, I left on good terms, and you know, I went to Carolina Panthers, I went to the Redskins, and you know, the Ravens are gracious enough to bring me back in to play in the league. And so you know, it's been a blessing to be back. And it's like no other, it's like no other organization. I've been with two others, and they're not like the Ravens. Dennis, uh, we've been hearing a lot of guys talk talking this week about you know, seeing Jared Johnson on Sunday, seeing Laurent McClain, and, you know, Jared Gaither and some former Ravens. And we're hearing guys say, those guys are still Ravens. There's something, you know, they're a part of, of why we are who we are and, and how we've been able to get to the point that we're at. Yeah, I mean, those guys have meant a lot to this organization over the years. And, uh, you know, I guess you can always consider them Ravens, but, you know, we won't be considering them Ravens this week. On weekend. Sunday, obviously, yeah. right. Like, you're not hoping that Jared is able to get to you <laughs> on a particular play on Sunday. Right, yeah, I'll be seeing a lot of him on uh, on Sunday, but, you know, it's always fun to be able to, guys you've played with and guys, you know, you've fought with on the, on the football field, um, now getting a chance to kind of play against them and see them again, it, it'll be a lot of fun, to be honest. Well, give me the scouting report on going up against Jared Johnson. You know, we're, we're so used to, we know what he does well. We always thought of him as this great sort of edge setter against the run and, you know, tough as nails, obviously. But for you, getting ready to play against him and knowing you're probably going to be seeing him, what, what's the matchup like? How do you go up against Jared Johnson? Yeah, I mean, fortunately, over, you know, over the last couple of years, we've got to go up against him a lot. And so we kind of know a little bit of his tendencies. But, you know, it's like you mentioned, he is a hard edge setter. And uh, he plays a million miles an hour and has a high motor. And, uh, you know, he's 
he's tough. And so he, he's going to be a difficult matchup for us. And, you know, he's a great football player. So we, we got our work cut out for us, certainly. Let me go both of you guys. Who's, um, Dennis, who's the toughest guy you've ever had to block? Who's the, the guy that you said, boy, this gave me fits when I had to go up and, and then sort of go after this guy? Um, you know, that's a good question. <clears throat> I think every player has, you know, their strengths and weaknesses and things they do really well. And you know, some players are really good against the run, others are, you know, better against the pass. And so, it, it's hard to say. But you know, whenever you play a team like the Steelers, you know, they have, you know, two Pro Bowl outside linebackers that you're going to be matched up on all game. And so, that's always a tough sure. um, physical game. And you know, you got to bring your uh, your best to go against those guys. So, but you know, there's guys like that all around the league. It just happens that we, you know, we face those guys quite a bit. Maki, what about you? Who's the guy that you say, man, I have matched up with this guy so many times, and, you know, we'll, we'll try to, I'll be trying to take on a double team, and, and he just, he gets to me sometimes. Jonathan Nogden is one of those guys, you know? <laughs> He would probably be a tough one, yes. In, in practice, I used to come around and just try to hit him as hard as I could, you know, but as, as much as you hit Jonathan Nogden, he kind of just looked at him and be like, are you done? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm done. You know, if you go back in the huddle, I was like, all right, all right. you know what I mean? I should be aware. I'm 6'10". Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I hit him and he doesn't move. All he does is he looks at you, are you done? I'm like, you know, other than my pride is hurt, uh, I'm going to go back in the auto. It's quite the lesson for me. Quite the lesson. Uh, a hello to you on Sunday night. Look like, you know, he got some rest the week before that and you guys are playing Oakland. Look like, you know, he looked like vintage hello to you on Sunday night. Being in there, were you noticing sort of him, the, the week off was good for him? Oh, yeah. You know, Haloti's a pro bowler, he's a professional, you know. Um, he's gonna, Haloti's gonna do what he does. And I played up next to a lot of defensive linemen, and he's one of the top guys that have lined up, being lucky enough to line up next to him. Sure. On Sunday, he's gonna show up and do his thing. Even if he doesn't practice the whole week, I'd rather him not practice so he can rest up for the game. Right, be ready. Just be you ready know, to go. Because he always the come and does what he does. You, um, a lot of guys, and a lot of sort of unheralded guys defensively on Sunday. Guys like James Ahedico and Corey Graham, not your, your typical Ravens defensive guys' names, not the guys that jump out at you. What does it mean for you to see guys like that step up in a game of that magnitude? No, Ravens, Ravens has always been known to bring guys, un, unnamed guys in to do work, and they always come through, you know? So to see that happen, that's just, that's what the Ravens are built on. You know, that's, that's the Ravens defense, of course. So it's exciting, it's always exciting to see new guys come in and, you know, play to that level of defense that has been, you're accountable. If you put on that purple jersey, you, you're accountable to play to that level. All right, give us the rundown. I'll start with you, Dennis. We got to see another uh, Jacoby Jones dance. <laughs> To be honest, after you guys telling us that he was working up something for Pittsburgh, it seemed a little similar to the one that he did in Philadelphia, so I was a little disappointed about that. But give me the, the grade, you're, a dan you're the Dance Central guy, you know, you're Mr. Dance Moves. Yeah. What'd you think of Jacoby on Sunday night? You know, I, obviously you didn't look very close to his I know he, he threw in a little bit at the end, he mixed it up kind of at the end. Yeah, well I mean, you know the dance that uh, Antonio Brown does every time he scores? Right. Yeah, I mean, he, he did that. He, he kind of mimicked that. I mean, he did his he did his thing, the like star, the, whatever it's called. What is it called? The Chapa City Juke. The Chapa City Juke. There you go. You know, he did that. Which is a regular move of mine, by the way. Yeah. When they hit the music later tonight, there'll be a lot of Chapa City Juke. Yeah, that's your go-to move, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look quite as good when I do it. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Right. Um, but, you know, he threw that in and then, uh, you know, a little... his name's Dance, and so, I mean, he was, I didn't know what he was going to do, he, was, he had been practicing that, you know, Antonio Brown dance all, all week, so, I thought he was, I thought we were going to see maybe a little bit more of that, yeah. but it was still, I mean, it was a very entertaining, I thought. Ma Maki, are you, uh, you got any dance moves in you? Like a, like a big man shuffle, something like that? I got some dance moves, but we're going to keep it PG-13. Well, yeah, I was going to say, hang on, island guys can all move, right? Like, big guys can dance too. You definitely, I watched, like, the Hawaii football team come in, all those guys can move. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so, you know, what do you think of Jacoby's, uh, you know, his, his moves on Sunday? I think he's gotten better every week. I'm, I'm, I'm well, he's looking practicing. forward to it. Yeah, he's practicing. I'm looking forward. And his dance has got cleaner and cleaner every week, so right. I'm looking forward to San Diego to see what, what he comes up with. At this, at this point. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.